from Microbe TV. This is Q&A with A&V. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me tonight from New York, Amy Rosenfeld. Hello, Vincent. How are you today? I'm very well. This is Good. the last time I will introduce you from New York, isn't it, on Q&A? Yes. Next We're week it'll be on from, Monday. from, should we say, Friendship Heights or Chevy Chase? I don't know. I think Chevy Chase has more cachet, doesn't it? Has a little more cachet. Apparently. So it's like the name of some actor, right? Folks. Yeah, it is. He's a comedian. This is Amy's last week in the lab. Can you believe it? Listen, we have been doing this Q and A for two years. Right, Amy? Isn't it been two years? If you say so, sure. And you have seen us evolve. And now we've you, evolved. <laughs> we always evolve. And now Amy has her own position, which hopefully next week she will tell you about because she'll be there. <laughs> and then, and no, then, I'll uh, just be in DC. I can well, be Ch in my Chevy new Chase. Then. So you may not tell them next week. All right. Anyway, I, I have to say, everyone wish Amy good luck. She's going to run her own lab. I'm extremely proud of her. And you'll see when she tells you what the position is, you're going to be really happy. And I'm really um, excited. And she's excited, and um, she's going to do great. And and she has said she will continue to do these Q and A's. So uh, that's great. It's good. Congratulations, it's Amy. Thank you very much. Where's all the moderators, people? The Toms and the here. Dan and Tom, Vanity, Les, and who else? Tom Van. Where's Lee Steph? Left. Steph, I haven't seen yet. Where's Frank? Frank, I haven't seen. Frank didn't show up for the party either. It's okay. No, not so good. You know, life intervenes sometimes. I understand. Anyway, everyone's Let's wishing see. you congratulations. It's good. All right, where's your picture? Oh, so as everyone knows, uh, I gave the. Uh, Richard Ernst lecture last week. In fact, we talked about it on Wednesday, but I got a um, um, a bunch of pictures and I have to show more of them, but I just wanted to show one, which I think is really cool. This is after the lecture. You can see there's a little table here with stuff, wine, orange juice, water. And, and this is a circle of mostly young people. Look, talking to me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know, you know, uh, how do I do this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and so I thought that was cool. Don't, don't you think it's cool, Amy? Yeah, it's great, for sure. And I'm drinking a little white wine here. Why are you work... drinking white wine? You don't like white wine. Someone put it in my hand. Oh, okay. Um, so they want to know what you're going to be studying in your lab. Enteros. Enteros. Enteroviruses. Enteros. Enteros and Picornas and stuff. Um, why don't you put up the the link to the, the video? Where's the link to the video? Where's the link to the video? Okay, I'm I'm doing it. Hang on, dudes. Here, that's the video link. That's YouTube. I put the video on YouTube, even though there's a, a ETH Zurich site. I also put it on Zurich. Um, on Zurich, you put it on Zurich, or you put it on your YouTube. I put it on my YouTube, but it's also on the Zurich site. So that's the link, and I'll leave it there so for confusing. a while. Is it confusing? I'm sorry. Anyway, it's Pete wants to know what happens to your lab. Well, my lab has been Amy for the last five years. So when Amy leaves, that's the end of the lab pretty much. The lab just moves, gets in the car, and moves, and goes under new management. So it's, yeah, Damien's going to take all the projects with her and all the reagents, the viruses, the blah, blah, blah. And I'm closing up shop. But we've been throwing stuff out all week. Yeah, and, I uh, smashed my hand. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not a good driver of the blue thing. The blue thing doesn't drive well. Not good. No, driver. the blue thing is a, is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, not a good driver for the blue thing. Anyway, a Amy will be working on enteroviruses and all, all sorts of things, but she's going to be doing other things that you'll hear about when you find out where she's going, and you're going to love it, folks. 
You're going to love it. Okay. So uh, thank you, Rob, for your contribution. I love this. Gain of fungus. How cool is that, right? That's gain, great. So are we gain gaining fungus? fungus? Well, well actually, know. I feel like I've gained a fungus among us. Uh, who's that? Well, it all depends on what day you're talking about. Okay. So here's the good question. I like this. In the in the virology lecture, viruses that pass through the filter are called filterable. Aren't they non-filterable if they pass through? <laughs> so can you? how would you explain that, Amy? Filterable means that it passes through. The non-filterable stuff stays on top. It's too large to go through the, whole, the pores of the filter. Yeah, so it's not really the right word. But maybe back then, filterable meant it passed through the filter. Could be. That's language what it means. Changed. Oh, filterable means it goes through? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. They go through, yeah. Laura, thank you for your contribution, Laura. Oh, uh, this is too, yeah, they were lovely. Farm-dies. She and Chris were lovely. They came, they came just for the incubator party, and uh, they were lovely and uh, really enjoyed the company and the conversation. And so thank you both for your continued support and enthusiasm. And I'll never forget, Chris said, we not are his do, family. Yeah, not only do we get science from you, but we feel you're part of our family. And nothing could be nicer than that, folks. Thank you. Okay. Um, here's a lot of stuff by me, which we don't need to talk about. Um, what's this story here? Uh, now we're talking about... Okay, how is monkeypox transmitted between humans? Close pretty, contact. Pretty close contact. So you could have skin lesions, and if you hug someone, and they get a little virus from the lesions that you they get, or mostly, you know, really close when people are having. What did uh, Rich say? The anyway, when they're very close, when you're having sex, and you get very close, you can spread it that way. And the respiratory droplets can be infectious. So if you're close, you can transmit it as well that way. So, um, but it doesn't trans, it doesn't maintain large chains of infection. So um, I'm, not con- I'm not too concerned about it. All right, let's see what else here. Are humans the only host for smallpox and that's why it can never return? Well, they are the only hosts. But if it's stored somewhere, it could return, right, Amy? That's not what they mean. What do they mean? They mean can it re- can it return from an animal? Can it could it could an animal cause an outbreak of smallpox? Not did somebody leave the freezer door open? That's like ridiculous. Okay. Richard says my sister had a normal but bad reaction to booster number two, then tested positive, then tested negative. Hard to figure how to count this. False positive antigen test, right? Yep. Happens. Yep. Happens. They listened to Twiv and Doudna's lab. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Cool. Um, Interested in pursuing an undergraduate in biomedical science or biology because of you guys. Which one would you recommend? Biology. The broader, the better, Amy? For sure, especially at the beginning. Yeah, my undergraduate was in biological sciences. Was yours? No, I have a BS in biology. Isn't that the same as biological sciences? I don't know. They called it biology at, at Emory. Okay, there you go. Biology. Twiv 26, Rich's first appearance on Twiv. Yep, a long time ago, years ago. Are the decisions for public health authorities easier to make for a population that is 95% vaccinated than for a population that is 65% vaccinated? Oh, boy. No idea. I'm not a public health official. You know, in, in Switzerland, they made decisions and much of the population is uh, is vaccinated um so i think it might be easier 
but it's only from observing, right? Because um, you have to worry about the people who are not vaccinated, right? If you're a public health official. Oh, by the yeah. way, Lori Garrett came to the incubator opening last week. Yeah, I think some of you know Lori Garrett, right? Yeah. Did you talk to her at all, Amy? I got her some wine. <laughs> Red or white? Red. Do you think there's a relationship between COVID and the weather? In New Jersey, we have had a cooler and dreary spring. It seems like it is driving cases. Well, you're more inside when it's cold and and rainy than you are outside. That's a good factor. I like that. Yeah. You know, many viruses that, that are seasonal have some weather component. And the, as Amy says, in the winter, people tend to stay inside more. And then boom, 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 the viruses go back and forth. Did you like that sound effect? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it's good. All right. So everybody now is congratulating you. Dozens of people. Best of luck. We're all excited. Oh, look, Mazel Tov. It's great. Congrats, Amy. Congrats, congrats. Everyone's happening for you. That's good. My newsfeed says there's evidence that the vax doesn't prevent long COVID. Is there real evidence or is this just news? Okay, good question. I I don't think it prevents it 100%, but I think it knocks it way down. So the other day, Jeff, you know Jeff, our fundraiser, right, Amy? Yeah. He asked Daniel at the party, what do you see? Who's getting long COVID? And Daniel said, mostly unvaccinated people. Very few vaccinated people are getting long COVID. And he said, that's also the experience of my colleagues in my network. So that's anecdotal, right? It's not a paper. It's not hard data. But this is what, uh, if the news says, I don't believe it. Because a, a well-known immunologist from Yale a few weeks ago said it was 50% in vaccinated people, long COVID, which I just don't buy. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. So uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Amy? I'm still processing the 50% because it doesn't make any sense. I think her math is off. She might want to recalculate. You know, when, think, that, when the GPS says to you, recalculating. You yeah. know, that's, yes. that's what she needs. She needs a little GPS <laughs> person that do you says, get Recalculating. 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 Uh, Maybe Elizabeth's, we could get her one in British. That could uh, be Amy, uh, cool. Elizabeth thinks you're going to like Maryland. Yeah, I think so too. I'm excited about Maryland. I'm excited about DC. Yeah. Eddie, it's been a while since I uh, said it. By the way, the dog in the picture sadly passed away in February. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, but welcome back. Yeah, ask a question or just listen, whatever. Oh, you can see uh, congratulations in uh, what they speak in New Zealand. Nami. Cool. cool. Namihi or Nami. Cool. Okay, let's see what we have here. Where will the mice go from my lab? Tell, tell them where the mice are going. To well, many... <laughs> yeah, many of the mice are going in the in the bus to the FDA. Yeah. Many of them are going. Yeah. So she, Amy's taking the most valuable ones with her. <laughs> Some young whippersnapper taking the wet lab space. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yes. Maybe some, some riffraff. Amy, some yeah. riffraff. <laughs> yes, some riffraff, yes. It's fine. I'd like to leave space, um, make space for someone else. But it's so how it so happens that um, at the moment I, I am enjoying something else better, right? Yeah, you got your own space. It's big space. It's got some furniture. It's got some food. It's got some computers. Yeah, big yeah. space. Um. Let me see what, oh, here, uh, if every, someone is vaccinated and boosted and gets symptomatic COVID, will the breath of the antibodies be affected when they are given Paxlovid? So somebody asked this of Daniel last week, 
And he says, it's a good question. We don't have the data to answer it. Is that a fair answer, Amy? Yeah, I would think so. Pete says, I'll miss Vincent going off and changing the heavy gas bottles. Yep, no more gas bottle changing, Well, right? that's not true. We have we just changed the liquid nitrogen today, so we have to buy another one. Okay, here's some information about Chevy Chase. Hunting or the Chevy Oat Child refers to the English and Scottish popular ballads compiled by Francis James Child, published in the late 19th century. Okay. Cool. You just clicked away Dania. Yeah, I'm going to go to her next. Super excited for Amy. She also looked fabulous last Thursday, as we knew she would. The Manolos made an appearance. Yeah, but it was really the Rothys. So now almost every single person in my in my family has a pair of Rothys. I because should get a you? commission. <laughs> I should get a commission. I need more Rothys. I should get a commission. As I said, now almost every single person in my family has a pair of Rothleys. It's amazing. Uh, I am currently ill with COVID. If I am, say, currently infected with Omicron BA2, should I worry about getting sick with 2.12.1? No, you shouldn't. Right, Amy? Yeah. Um, Amy and Vincent covered monkeypox in their, yeah, we, we have now covered it on last week's live stream. We covered it on Twiv. We covered it on Twivo a bit today. Oh, uh, what did Nels have to say? So he pointed me to next strain where they've compiled, um, quite a bit of the sequences. And, and they're all uh, the same from the 2018 isolates in Israel. Is that correct? Pretty much. Yeah. Let, let's look at it. It's a DNA virus. It doesn't change. Where is it? I don't know. It should be here. Next strain. How do I know where it is? Uh, Monkeypox. Because I saw it today. Here we are. Yeah, all right. So you have to look at this, Amy, because this is quite interesting. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, let's do the screen share. All right, so here's the thing. I guess I have to make this bigger, right? Yeah. So these are the, um, let's get rid of this. These are the 2017, 2018 isolates. And these are the new ones here in, in, uh, in yellow. I have to move it over. Sorry, folks. My, my producer isn't here tonight, you know. Is that better? Yeah. So th these are all these are all the uh, current outbreaks. These yellow, and you can see these are all clustering. He said there are about fifty base changes between all of these. These are almost identical, and the previous uh, isolates. So yeah, from two thousand and eighteen in Israel and other places. Yeah. 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 And you need to yeah. But so, it's uh, not unexpected considering the fact it's a DNA virus. It takes care of all of the DNA repair, replication, and recombination machinery. Yeah. Well, they also, uh, it could be a single spillover, right? Because when you have a spillover, yeah. every new spillover, you have a slightly different sequence, right? Uh -huh. so anyway, we'll, we'll continue to cover it. And all our so, all right, so we did it on Twivo today, and then I recorded a thirty-minute special with Daniel Griffin this evening on monkeypox. So you should have a week's your week's fill of monkeypox. <laughs> Do you have your week's fill of monkeypox, Amy? Yeah, last night I did. Yeah. Are you planning to do a live coronavirus course? I am. Yeah. Not sure yet when, because I promised to do live viruses in the fall. So we'll see when I do it. Hey, if I get inspired, I could do it this summer, right, Amy? Yeah, for sure. So here's a question for all of you out there. As you know, uh, Amy is likes to make sure I do the right thing. Let's put it that way, right? Is that a good way to put it? When your eyes open up, then you know you said something. Um, do you think she'll continue to do that after she leaves? This is a question for the audience, not you, Amy. I, <laughs> I was going to say, okay, good luck. Good luck to you, people. Uh, 
I mean, congrats to both of you from the Isle of Man. I watched your Zurich lecture today. Also, congrats to Amy and her new job, Stars. Both of you. Thank you, Rach, very much. It's very you. kind. Love that. Uh, Amy, She's who the will... one who wrote in about the bagels. Sorry. Yes. They have bagels on the Isle of Man. Um, who will change the CO2 and inject the mice now? Will Vincent need to travel south to help uh, out? They have central CO2 and central liquid nitrogen, so nobody changes it. And I think, I think I can get the animal facility people to help me with uh, mouse injections and bleeds. Vin Vincent is no longer needed. It's fine. Well, it it's would good. be far free. It would be a very expensive trip uh, yeah. twice a week. Not yeah. so good. Especially like gas is like outrageous. Expensive? They were talking about it at dinner. Yeah. Apparently. Oh, oh yeah. Gasoline is absurd. Like, it's like almost $5 or five oh five or something. It's like crazy. Well, we heard from Ian that diesel is even more, seven, eight bucks a gallon, right? Crazy. Totally, totally crazy. Uh, Morris, thank you for your contribution to the incubator. Much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Because of the proximity to Hopkins and the subjective rating as number two in virology, Vegas has that as odds-on favorite for Amy. She's not going to Baltimore. She's going to Washington, D.C. area. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to Baltimore. Priscilla also feels part of the Twib family. Well, we, 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 all of you here, all, what do we have? 371, 371 of you. We all feel you're part of the family. Yeah. I wonder where Jen is. I wonder if she recuperated from uh, from Animal Animal Two's birthday party. You know, it was a trampoline park. Things happen there. Okay, we have a question from Doug. When a glycosylated protein is minced by a proteasome, does the glycosylation remain on the peptides put up on MHC? Hmm. Good question, right? Yes, and a glycosylation does remain. It does remain? Yeah, the proteasome mm -hmm. is just cutting the the peptide bond, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And by the way, folks, we will continue to do this. Amy has agreed in her new position to do this because she'll do it at home, right? Yeah, I think Wouldn't so. Wouldn't interfere with her position. I think okay. so. Well, we shall see. Are there hierarchies of sensitivity for a rapid antigen test? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, Daniel published a, a good summary of them. Um, I, I just don't know which episode it is. You'd, you'd have to look back. But there are sensitivities and correlations with PCR, okay? I think you can find that. It's, it's a few, few weeks back. Well, here's an interesting question. What is the first known virus to infect humans? <laughs> well, the steel of polio is really old. Smallpox is old too, right? Mm -hmm. Measles, measles. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. hard to nail it down because, of course, we didn't have diagnostic tests. Well, mm. it's not just that, but um, there's not like a common record of like, you know, people had pox marks and died until a certain point or people put together like rashes were not good, right? Mm -hmm. Although one might think that it would be kind of something like that we could like clearly show came from animals, right? Like r Rinderpest being the, the ancestor to measles, right? Yeah, that's correct. And that's believed to have come from cows when we started, you know, gathering cows in pastures for right. food, right? Yeah, okay. or work. Did Were they... Food or were they plow people? Yeah, the, the plows also, cows. I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't there. Neither was I. But, you know, in the history books, it is written. Tis written. Tis right. written. <laughs> Doreen wants to know, in this sci-fi drama, The Last Ship, pandemic virus vaccine was distributed via piggyback on a virus spread by touch sweat. Completely outlandish or maybe possible in a few decades. Well, I think that that's not going to happen because it's too random. Right, you don't want to depend on it spreading by touch sweat. You want to 
put it on the people. I think a, a micro needle patch is much more likely to. I don't think that's that correct. Amy, Amy agree, disagrees with me, and I'm sure yeah, Amy will have more to say about micro needle patches in the future, right, Amy? Maybe I don't know. I just know that when I talked to them, when I talked to someone recently, or they told me about it, they were like, "Nope, not happening." But he also had a very strong opinion about other things, too. Or it's not happening. You think SARS-CoV-2 was containable given a competent administration and a quick reaction? Or were we, were we always going to end up in a pandemic, may, maybe minus so much death? All right, I'll let you go first, Amy. I think we have different views on this. I think we would have ended up in a pandemic, but with m much less death. So... Because it was of... already here. It was already here. By the time you could observe it and put the stuff yeah. together, it was already all over the world. So there was no way that it was ever going to. Um, you would have had to say that there was something wrong with the very first case. And you yeah. don't usually say something until you have several cases. And by that time, it was going it was already around the world. So I think we would have had a pandemic, but maybe much less that. I mean, it didn't help that the administration denied its its problem being a problem, right? Well, it wasn't the administration who first denied it. We should get that straight. It was Fauci who first denied it. He said it was a China problem. I, I'm not sure about that, Amy. We're going to have to check your sources. Just go to the news. Okay. But, but whatever. The truth of the matter is, is... How could a virus be a China problem? It's the world's problem. That's what he said. But that's what he said. Well, that's, if he said that, and I don't know if it's true, but although knowing you, it's probably goddamn true. <laughs> um, yeah, it was wrong. But Trump also said it's going to be over in a week. And well, yes, really I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't say that there was a sole person. I just said yeah. that lots of things contributed, and if there were different people in, in in power and he doesn't say any he doesn't administration is a large word right i don't know why yeah, I know, that actually people. means right it means I, tons of people or four people i don't yeah, know got it but, but i also think that china reacted too 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 slowly they didn't close their borders until a month after they knew there was an outbreak of a new coronavirus and that all contributes so many people are to blame so I don't think closing their borders would have made a difference. Some people think that they do. Like Michael Warby thinks it would have made a big difference. He could think it all he wants. It's not correct. Vincent, you haven't had Shingrix. I haven't had it yet. I went to a, a checkup today and my doctor wanted to give it to me. And I said, I'm going to go to CVS this week uh, and get it. So I promised I would do that. I did have shingles, though, and... Not that I'm, you know, depending on that, but I'm going to get Shingrix, yeah. Um, now that Amy's gone, I can take a Shingrix, and if I get knocked out for a day, it's not a problem. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, because I'm because so I'm essential your lack to your of work. vaccination, your lack of adherence to the vaccination scheme is not my fault. Not at all. Is that it's what my, you're saying? It's my obligation to you. It's my obligation to you. Oh, I see. Will new medical clinics and consulting Luckily rooms we're be divorced. Man, 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 <laughs> divorced. <laughs> Luckily, we're getting divorced. You know, we're cleaning up after the uh, incubator party last week, Amy and I, because nobody else is. It's fine. And someone's asked if we were married because we're working so well together. We've been working in the friggin' lab for 20 years, right? <laughs> yes. Oy, oy, oy. Will medical clinics be mandated to have open windows or, or super filtration? Now, open windows, no. They're not going to be mandated to have open windows. Maybe good air filtration, that that would make sense. But no. Oh, here we go. The absolute ridiculous claims from the cardiologist who claims one in two people have long COVID regardless of vaccine. This is the biggest pile of doo-doo in the world, Okay. Stay in your lane, or as Nels said, Nels said today, Amy, don't lean too far over your skis. That's how they put it in Utah, apparently. <laughs> Why? What happens when you lean over your skis? You fall. Oh, you over. fall down. You know, so it's like a cardiologist. Do you fall on your head? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, that's not good. So that results in concussions? Oh, yeah, this explains you can get a, a concussions, lot. yes. This explains uh, a lot. Maybe he should have worn a helmet. Maybe the cardiologist needs to wear a helmet how many when boosters? he reads papers. Amy and I have one booster. Uh, yeah. Two, two other initial doses and one booster, and that's enough for us. Well, so yeah, Charlotte went to dinner without a mask. Good for you, because I know not too long ago, Charlotte, you were very worried. I'm glad that you're moving out into the world. It's great. Yeah. Excellent. It's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, we Amy, should buy the cardiologist a helmet. You have for a helmet. When he Why don't you send it to him? No, my helmet too expensive. Crushed my you hand. You can get too. him Husband. a little bike helmet for when he reads the papers, because obviously he's not reading them properly. So he's Look, giving himself a concussion. Amy says she, she, a crushed, she crushed her hand. Husband grabbed old wire cutters. <laughs> yeah. I took a risk and ate dinner at or with ten people. Sounds good. No, it's okay. It's good. No worries. Hope the food was good. If Amy is going with the mice, we can save the world. You bet. Maybe he's going to do good stuff. You'll see. You'll see, right? Yeah, hopefully. My 33-year-old daughter has tested positive for the second time. She feels all right, but she tested because she had a little sniffle. She's cavalier. I worry about her future. Don't worry. This happens to a lot of people. They test positive because they're just doing random testing. They don't have any symptoms. It's fine. This is the way it's going to be. Stop testing. What do you think of the NIH study of long COVID that concluded extensive diagnostic evaluation revealed no specific cause of reported symptoms in most cases? I'm going to let Amy answer that. Can you answer that? What do you think of that, Amy? Well, that's not a good answer. No specific cause, then how are you going to, how are you finding a disease and going to understand it? Or even gener pretend to generate a, a, a treatment countermeasure. I don't get it. I think we've always complained that the diagnostics for long COVID are very ambiguous. So I think, yeah, this is not surprising. So that's why I think the estimates are a bit on the high side, especially of people who are vaccinated. I have no doubt that there are some long COVID of unvaccinated people, but I th even then, the number may be too high. I just don't know. I, I don't like questionnaires for um, diagnostic tools because it's subjective to what you think and what I think and various other things. Yeah. I don't like them. Uh, might the cross protection against monkeypox from smallpox vaccine be due to the viruses being large with lots of epitopes? Yeah. And they're also very similar, right? Similar sequences, yeah. although Amy has shown that you don't need to have similar sequences to be cross-reactive, right? Nope. This is one of Amy's amazing findings. Yep. Amy, if your new position is tenure track, do you get credit for years spent at Columbia? No. It is tenure track, though, isn't it? Uh, they don't use the word tenure. Okay. Amy will keep you on your toes for sure, as she should. Now, wait a minute. Amy. What? Stop looking at your texts. I'm not looking at my texts. I'm thinking. I'm Why listening you? and I'm thinking. Why does Elizabeth say, as she should? Because that's part of my job. It's been part of my job for 20 years. What do you think? I'm going to get a new job? Jeez Louise. Some people. They fire I love you. The Twix universe. They, they but fire I, you when you say you're going to move to a new city. They fire you. It's unbelievable. Who, who fires you? You. <laughs> no, I didn't fire you. I'm just kidding. I love the Twix universe, but I never get to see the live shows. Is there an updated schedule? Also, I'd love. Well, what to live shows besides this one and and Nels do you do? Yeah, that's all. Um, so this one is every Wednesday at 8 p.m. 
and Nels is once a month, which is kind of a random day. But if you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you turn on notifications, you'll get a notification on the app when uh, we're going live. But I, I would, I could put a schedule on the web page, the website. Also, Amy told me we're now publishing a newsletter monthly about the activities of Microbe TV, and uh, that's going to be on yeah. the Microbe TV page also. Yeah, where yeah. is it? We've discussed it now for ten days. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, I, I did three pods today. I'm sorry. I'll get to it. Well, wait. Okay. I, I'm going to do it before you're gone to Chevy Chase. Okay. Well, that's Monday. What types of gas do you use in the lab? CO two and propane. What about liquid nitrogen? That becomes a gas when it. That becomes evaporates. a gas when it. Uh, yeah. So we get the, actually the CO2 is liquid, right? Isn't it? Or is it compressed gas? It's compressed. It doesn't liquefy? No. The, the nitrogen is, is liquefied and then the liquid goes into the tank and then it evaporates and keeps the, the tubes cold. And the propane could explode. Is there a way to find out the papers to be discussed? Well, we don't discuss papers here on the live stream. On Nels, I usually put the papers in the show notes for the live stream. So I publish the live stream a day or two before and I put the papers in there. Yeah. When monkeypox happens to get on the skin, how quickly does it start to find its way through to cause an infection? It could take up to three weeks, apparently, um, to, to get a, a lesion. It's a long incubation time. Yeah, but it's going to be shorter also. There's a range, as, as usual. Uh -huh. uh, I enjoyed the discussion about Parkinson's. The, I also did. That was on TWIN, This Week in Neuroscience, which dropped yesterday. And... Yeah, I didn't know a lot of, about Parkinson's, but uh, Tim did a really good job. So this was very nice. Mm -hmm. I think the odd thing about monkeypox is that it popped up worldwide almost all at once. It will be interesting to find out why. Because we're immune compromised. We're immune, not compromised, we're immune naive. Yeah, I, I would bet most of the people didn't have smallpox vaccine. Did you get smallpox vaccine as a kid? No, but no. it's not just a smallpox vaccine. It's also the fact that we've been like uh, quarantined and isolated for two, two and a half years for COVID. Yeah, that was a theory of, of Richard Heyman, you, who you're a fan of, I understand. That was David. Uh, David Heyman. Sorry. Uh, the autoantibodies to interferon was a study in all unvaxed. Would, what would you expect for those with autoantibodies but fully vaxxed and no early antiviral treatment? Yeah, those are all in unvaxxed people. That's true. Um, I don't know that some unvaxxed people do get severe COVID, right? It's not 100% protection. And so right. it may be that in those you would see autoantibodies to interferon as well. And Janet says, awesome that you're going to be here for Q&A. Yes. <clears throat> yes, good. And Mark thinks you're going to Georgetown and you're going to be the head of bagelology, but it's not Georgetown. <laughs> no, it's not Georgetown. But I did look up where the good bagels are and George, uh, Bethesda bagels was number three. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're going to try them out? Yeah, eventually. Okay. But good. you want to know what was number two? No, what's what's number two? Number two is the bagel place at the hotel in, at the University of Maryland where we went with um, Condit mm. and Grant and um They were good bagels. Harry. I like Harry. them. Yeah. And that's where I understood that you can't put salt. Never, ever I'll order a salt bagel and then belly locks and then complain that it is too salty. Belly locks <laughs> is super salty. And a salt bagel, well... So we were there for breakfast, and Grant McFadden, who's a pox virologist in Arizona, he's eating this, and he said, this is awfully salty. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Pretty funny. 
and Amy couldn't resist. What does he expect? He gets a salt bagel with... What's with the belly locks. Belly locks Not is the even, salty. Yeah, it wasn't Nova. It was belly locks. Of course, belly locks is super salty. In 1970... Nobody buys belly locks anymore. Yeah, I know. Was the first monkeypox case in a human, but it was a nine-month-old baby. Since monkeypox is a zoonosis with a reservoir and rodents, how do you speculate he got infected? So they may have... They may have had rodents in the house. They may have had a pet, a recent pet that came from a pet store where rodents were contaminated. Yeah, a nine-month-old baby is probably not crawling around in the, in the garden. But uh, there's well, still it also could be... depends. It, it doesn't say where the baby is. Like there's a kid in Daniel's picture yesterday or today. The kid didn't look more than nine months old, but he's in the. I look like he might have been from the bush of Africa. That was in um, what country? It was somewhere. He didn't say the country, but it was Western Africa. Okay. That was DRC in 1970. There you go. So that child was in the DRC, so probably was exposed to rodents, right? Yeah, in the bus, right? Yeah, yeah. It was good. Maybe the corona course could be an important part of the viruses course. So in other words, you're saying a subsection. That's not a bad idea. I could do like a, a more lectures on the corona just to focus on them. I'm just figuring now how many lectures each virus gets. We're going to have two a week as before, but is two enough, well, do you how, think, Amy? How many viruses do you want to cover? So I let's do... I don't know that viruses are two a week is enough. So coronaviruses, picornaviruses... Uh, uh, influenza viruses, herpes viruses, retroviruses, noroviruses, paramyxoviruses, um, rhabdoviruses, adenoviruses, pox viruses. That's ten. That's a, if two two lectures each. That's a twenty week course. It's still short. It can be longer. Yeah. But some might get more than others. Some viruses, like picornas, is a huge one. It could almost be broken down into enteros and everything else, right? Yeah. You can be sure that I will consult Dr. Rosenfeld. I'll, I'll text her up or, or get on Zoom. Say, Amy, what do you think? Well, give... There is the Zoom. That's what the Zoom was invented for. Is this the first time Amy has lived somewhere other than New York City? No. Can Went you to go college through... in it. I went, so I actually was not born in New York City. I was born in outside St. Louis. I grew up in the Borscht Belt and uh, in New Jersey. I went to college in Atlanta and then moved into the city. I went to postdoc in Montreal and then I moved to Chicago and then I moved back to the city. You're wandering, aren't you? Yeah. I'm the wandering Jew. But now you're going to settle down, right? Yeah, I'm going to settle down. Yeah. It must be, it must be, um, well, you, you were in New York for many years, but this is a good city. Don't worry about it, okay? You'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. If you're, ever, if you're ever missing, you can always visit the incubator, okay? Are you going to supply the bagels? Of course, right down there in, in the, what's the name of that place? Bagel Pub? Bagel Pub. They're a little bit too big. Yeah, they are. They're like rolls. They're kind of hole. rolly. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of rolly. All right, here's a question for you. If zinc acetate lozenges may shorten the duration of common cold and zinc doesn't work against SARS-CoV-2, then might sulfur interfere <laughs> with COVID-2? I think the zinc in, in Rhino is bogus, right, Amy? Yeah, yeah. It's, mm, yeah. You were looking at that, right? I did. I did look at it. Wrote a whole grant on it. Actually, I did pretty well on the grant, too. Uh, just not funded. Uh, I don't know that I would take sulfur. I'm not really a big person into the smell and taste of rotten eggs. But is there any evidence that... Um, no. <laughs> what's the question? I didn't ask you yet. Of sulfur it's, working for SARS-CoV-2 yeah. against coronavirus? No. There's no. No. Okay. J Jane listens every day. Well, we don't have a show every day, but thank you for listening. 
Huh. My my son in law got COVID a week later. My eight year old grandson. Yeah, that's that's what happens in families. It's okay though. Hopefully they're all fine. All right, Eddie has a question. Uh, the guy who lost his dog. Uh, leaving all politics aside, what are your thoughts on the uh, DPRK, aka North Korea, admitting for the first time that they do have COVID badly? I'm not surprised. Are you, Amy? No. I'm not sure what they have in terms of vaccines or antivirals, right? Yeah, I don't know enough about it. Um, the patches. What are the patches? I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? The patches? No. I do not. Uh, oh, wait. UK publication, long COVID, proportional severity of illness, age, comorbidity, vaccination status, effect of antivirals unknown, but intuitively less viral load. Okay. I think this is just not a, not a um, useful study. Severity yeah, not of illness useful. Because oh, yeah. there are people who have mild illness and have long COVID. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, he what? did go to Emory. Who? Rick Bright, he got his PhD at Emory at the, in uh, Jackie Cates' lab, but he also worked for Yerkes. Would over-vaccinating for SARS-CoV-2 cause any adverse effects, such as a possible cytokine storm? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But you might start to make autoantibodies, right? Yeah. I'm not saying uh, it's a good idea. Okay, so it's eight forty six, maybe four more, and then I gotta go. This is the last time you're gonna say that, right? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And you're in Chevy Chase. You won't be in the lab when you do this, right? So you'll be home. You're gonna say, "I have to go make bagels or something." <laughs> Just kidding, Amy. Chill. Yeah, I know. I'm not. I'm not upset. I have made my own bagels before. When I oh, lived yeah? in Chicago. Yeah. I'm, is it hard? Is it hard I, to make? Well, I took a, a, they're not hard to make, but you have to find the right recipe. So first I mm. used King Arthur. It was good, but wasn't right. Then I used uh, Peter Reinhardt, which was much better. And you ha it takes a long time because then you let the dough rise twice and then you, you uh, shape them, you let them poof again. Then you boil them with sodium hydroxide. Then you put the seeds on. Then you put them on with planks. And then you bake them. Uh, it takes like all day. Well, anyway, in when Amy's doing the live stream from Chevy Chase, she'll be at home. So there's no ELISA or plaque assay to do. So maybe she'll stay till 10 p.m. That's all I'm saying, Dr. Rosenfeld. Yeah, maybe I'll stay till 10 p.m. Okay. Um. If you guys could make a change to the science funding system, what would it be and why? Oh, boy. Do we have ideas about that? You want to go first? No. No, 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 no. You don't, don't want to go want at all, go right? First. Okay, I will go first because I am no longer in the science funding system. I'm finished, okay? And really, because I'm tired of it. I am tired of nonsense reviews that are meaningless because there's not enough money to fund all the really good grants. So they tell you to make a distinction and they distinguish them in BS ways that are useless. Okay. I'm tired of that. So what's the solution? The way well, grant may not have grants that are $52 million to one to like only seven people. Yeah. Well, part of the problem is that a few people get a lot of money and they get more and more money because everyone thinks they're so freaking great and they're not. Okay. That aside, First of all, we have a 12-page limit for an R01. I want a two-page R01 where in broad strokes you tell me what you're going to do and we base the review on that. No critique of, oh, you didn't describe how you're going to infect the mice or you didn't describe how you're going to make the plasmids. Screw that. If you are doing science, you know how to do this. That's baloney to make distinguishing critiques based on those. Two-page, that's it. New new investigators where you don't know their track records, so you can't, you know, make a, a distinguish. Who cares Maybe what you, your track record is. I got to know. If There's many the older PIs clones. that have taken money that have done nothing with that amount of money. True. 
So what is okay. the track record? I think a two-page proposal, broad strokes. And well, I find the idea of innovation sections. It's uh, offensive. Uh, yes, because at the end of the day, you're just asking me to apply in a, uh, innovation where it doesn't really fit. And to say, to get a critique that says, yeah, I guess plaque assays are acceptable, but they're not really particularly innovative. Well, if you can demonstrate another technique, plaque assay or TICD-50 not included that can quantify infectious virus, let me know. And remember, yeah. RNA is not infectious virus. They want innovation for the sake of innovation, even when a plaque assay will do the job quite well. No, it's not innovative. We're going to take points off your score. This is such garbage. You have no idea. And I swear, people on the study sections will deny it, but they're lying because I we have done enough uh, grant applications to know that this happens. So well, we need to get rid of that. I can publish my reviews. I can make a whole book of it. Yep, we could publish them, but we don't want to do that because you're going to you know, be close. I might go back into academia one day. Who knows? Anyway, so that's the biggest problem with the grant review is that, I mean, the other problem is there's not enough money to go around, so they should increase the budget for NIH, but the real problem is the re is peer review. It sucks. And, you know, the other part is the journals, people dumping papers into luxury journals, and uh, they get funded because they have science selling nature papers and people don't even read them. I mean, we get reviews back from people who say, oh, you forgot to include this. Really? It's on page six. You didn't read it. And you can't, you have no recourse. A, a recent application, they said, you need a structural collaborator. Really? What do you think the letter is from the crystallographer at the back of the application? Unbelievable. Well, no, actually, what was more galling is that the grant was for $275 and the experiment is 40000 is 50000 so that's about a tenth of the grant. And they said, you should do the experiment before we give you any money. That was yeah, the point of the grant. Yeah, this is another part. This is another part of the problem. They want you to have done the experiments. Go, another critique, which is very common, they'll say, we don't know if we this don't is going to work. You, you, well, no, it's not. That, uh, we don't know it's going to work. We don't believe that you're able to do these experiments because you don't. we don't know that you're smart enough to do that to know how to do the bioinformatics or to do right. the sequencing. Yeah. And you sequence polio and stuff. Um, I, I do like those critiques. Those are enjoyable. So anyway, Lack of productivity Jeff. Is, is enjoyable. I also, what is the other one that is also super enjoyable? Oh, what well, they pick on you often. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm trying to figure out which ones I really find super enjoyable. Um, so it's enough. We we complained mm -hmm. enough. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember what it Doreen, is. Doreen, thank you. I know. You. Was, I, I know thank was, you for your contribution. I really appreciate it. All right. It's seven minutes to nine. Fine. I'll stay till nine, and then I gotta go. Okay. Got uh, Amy is do. correct. That is what Tony said. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So. What did he say, well, Amy? He said it's a China problem? He, he didn't think it was a U.S. problem? Oh, he, how can he not have known? Of course, At the very viruses. beginning, he said it was their problem. He was not concerned because it was their problem. No. It is a very short-sighted thing to have said. It sounds very bigoted also, which is not a good sign. Not a good sign mm. of how you should start off. Not the a good Miss Cannon Center has some good coverage on early failures. Oh, I will have to look at that. I don't know what it is. Do you know what this is, the Miss Cannon Center? No. No? All right, we'll look it up. Let me write it down. Miss Cannon Center. I have a pile of notes that I've written here over the live streams, Amy. Uh uh, look and, at Jeremy thinks I'm, I'm never going to get go where. What? So you have a pile of notes, and that's good, but they don't go anywhere. They just build up. Unless you tell me to do it. 
<laughs> Look at Jeremy says, I'm never going to get the flu vaccine with you gone. She, she's going to call me or text me and say, Vincent, of course get the flu, vaccine, the flu vaccine, right? Of mm -hmm. course. He needs the old people flu vaccine. That's what no. you said to the, that's what you said this year to the people. You said, do you have the old people flu vaccine? And they said, no, we only have the regular people. You said, fine, it was good enough for you. So Nicholas says, our personalities are my favorite together. Yeah, we have a good chemistry. Good. Who knew? I just yeah. said two years ago, Amy, let's do a live stream. She said, yes, you've yeah. been a wonderful team. Yeah. Have been, we're not done yet. We're still going. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't realize we had died. No, I mean, we're not a team as, well, actually, they're probably saying our research team because it's being broken up, right? Oh, okay, sure. It's but, one way to look at it. It wasn't the way I was looking at it, but okay, sure. <laughs> the team is just under new management. It has a new, It has a new head manager. I mean, I don't understand what the problem is. All it is, it's the new head coach. That's the word, head coach. New head One booster coach. is not enough. You need five to combat waning. Yeah, he's he's joking. I know you're joking because waning, we don't like the word. And then he says later, I hope he knows I'm joking. Yes, I do know you're joking. Yeah. How does Paxlovid work? Amy, it's, how does uh, Paxlovid work? It is a protease inhibitor. So it prevents... Um, proteolytic processing of the polypeptide into the mature peptides that are required for viral replication and yeah. assembly. Uh huh. How do you think Shanghai will get through this Omicron outbreak? I read people are locked in their apartments with no end in sight, little food, no mass vaccinations. I don't know. What do you think, Amy? I don't know if that's true or not. I have no idea if they're really in their apartment or if or if uh, they're relaxing the the lockdown. I have no idea. I don't know that I would trust anything that comes from a news channel. Yeah, um, and but I don't remember, really know anybody there. At the beginning of the pandemic, they did lockdown. Same thing. You locked in your apartment. They have monitoring. They can tell where you go by your cell phone. Yeah, but so did Spain. But so, so did Spain. It's they they got through that. They'll get through this. It's you know. But yeah. I do think they should mass vaccinate. I don't know why they're not. I don't know. How many boosters before the immune system gets overstimulated? <laughs> Depends on the vaccine. It really does. And you know, we get a flu booster every year, basically. Although I, probably it's not a booster. It's a new. It's just another vaccine, right? Depending on the year. Yeah, um, I mean, I think some of the lot. components are overlapping. Hello, here's Animal Party. There you go. Yeah, Amy. there's Jen. Hello, we Jen. were concerned that Jen wasn't here. Uh, yeah, they want to know if you're wearing a yellow hoodie. No hood. It's just the fleece. The top is gray. The bottom is yellow. The sleeves are yellow. Um, I walked into I walked into Nisha and Thomas was there, and he says to me. You're dressed for the winter. I said, it's really cold. He said, well, use the, change the thermostat. I said, it's broken. Uh, Nels is over my head most, most of the time, but I like to listen. I listen to all things Vincent put up. Thank you, Gren. Gwen. I appreciate that. I, th I happen to Great. think it's, it's good stuff, but who knows, right? Mm -hmm. I hope Amy's mice will be okay. Are they going to Washington? Amy's mice go to Washington. You know that song, Mister. S Wait, what was it? Was it Mister Chips goes to Washington? Mister Chips goes to Washington. Amy's mice go to Washington. Yeah, actually, a little bit outside of Washington, right? Yeah. Best wishes, Amy. We expect nothing but the best from you and for you. Thank you for all you have done. We hope you and Vincent will continue the live Q and A for as long as we live. Now. Isn't that a great sentiment? That's lovely. It's great. Yeah. It's just great. It's lovely. Very nice. Uh, Incel DX is doing AI analysis to look for biomarker patterns from various blood tests on long COVID patients. I think there are a couple other labs doing something similar. Isn't this what, what Ian did for CFS? 
biomarker he did, analysis? He did biomarker analysis. I don't think he did. I don't think he used AI. He actually measured by. Yeah, he actually did an needs. experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Overjoyed. Hello again. I caught a cold, not COVID, but it kicked my long COVID back into high gear. I guess this will be a lifetime struggle. I don't know. It, it may not be. It could be sorted out. Have, you know, a lot of people are working on it. And I each put yep. a lot of money into it, right? Yep. Okay, it's nine o'clock. Two more questions and then I gotta go. These are not yeah. questions, so they don't count. I called the cardiologist, the cardiologist who was face on Twitter one day. He was being mean to Dr. Gounder. I don't know why well, he has to be everybody mean. Says, it, well, I don't know why he was being mean, but she's not a genius. Vanity uh, new newsletter will be a great addition. Yeah, so the first edition is out, but I haven't, I only sent it to one person, <laughs> Carl Zimmer. <laughs> I have to send it to all of you. It's very nice. It has photos in it, and every month it's going to be an update on what we're doing. And so I will send it to all of you because I have many of your emails. And this is well, Amy's idea. It also goes on the micro, it also goes on yeah. the micro TV webpage and with a little tap that says newsletter so that they can click it down. Yeah. And then there's the archive of all of them. So it's since I simple. do the website myself, I have to figure out how I want to do it. And, you know, what happened to done. Warren? Uh, yeah, Warren's still there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so the newsletter is fun. Well, that's the whole purpose of having an intern. Yes, I'm going to get our intern uh, to work on it. Yeah. Well, aren't you getting two additional interns? Isn't aren't Kate's children going to intern for you? That's what I heard, but they, you know, she has to ask me. But she's out of the country now, right? Yeah, she's in St. Bart. How would you suggest helping a family member who's terrified of getting COVID listens to Dr. Poland on long-term risks? There's still a profound risk, and new variants has them frozen. Well. Let's into Daniel. Why don't you get uh, vaccinated? I mean, that, that's yeah. the key. Maybe they don't want to get vaccinated. You tired, Amy? Yeah, I'm tired. I've been up for a while. <laughs> Laughing then... crazily with the helmet joke. Please don't leave us, Amy. Wish you great happiness at the new job. See, I that's told good. you, ninety-nine percent of the people love you. It's just a few that don't, and they're not here anymore. Okay, don't worry about it. And look, we got 500 people tonight. Hey, folks, Great. click the like button so that. Now how many likes do you got? 193. So that people can find us and get good information, right? Mm -hmm. um, talk about Amazon Smile. Right. <laughs> so Amazon has a program called Amazon Smile. You sign up for it and you pick your charity. You can pick Microbe TV. They give a percentage of your purchases to Microbe TV or whatever cool. charity you pick, and it doesn't cost you anything more, All right? So cool. it's really good. So I would love if you could all do that because, like me, you probably buy stuff at Amazon, and um, uh, you should designate us. That would be great. Cool. Cool. You got a notification today that Tuivo had just ended. Oh, I'm sorry. You're supposed to get a notification when it begins, right? I'm sorry, uh, Amy, do you want to leave or do you want to keep going? No, I got to go. So I was willing to do two more questions, but there's no questions? No, they're questions, yeah. Okay, but, well, well cool. not really, but they're comments that we can talk about here. Like sure. Dennis says, uh, now I've done a COVID positive, three shots, two plus one. I was surprised because I'm not that special. Prescribed Paxlovid. I'm pretty sick. Interesting. You're pretty sick, but you're going to live. You're not going to go to the hospital. That, that vaccines, those vaccines are working. What do you think? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Because of this program, I encouraged my daughter to get Pavlo, Pav, Paxlovid for my sick son-in-law. He was better in 24 hours. Thank you. And Dr. Griffin. Yeah. Paxlovid can do well. Yeah, for sure. All right. CO2, I CO2 go. is a gas or solid. It sublimates, not melts. Yeah. Did I say it melted? I just said it evaporated or sublimated. Yeah. Oh, one more, Amy, okay? Good sure. luck with your move. And Animal Party says, we're starting to see a lot of enterovirus in the office. Really? 
She should do a ah. collaboration with uh, her office. Yeah, you know she that? should collect samples. Well, you need stuff. an IRB yeah. for that. Well, she could get us an IRB. Very cool. I went and I wonder how they're determining that they're enteros, or uh, because if they're using Biofire, it's only entero slash rhino. No, you should talk to her. Yeah, right. Jen, Jen, and See, the enteros, liquid. and now I moved my painting too. Yeah, the painting is is being packed, Jen, because it's going to her new digs. CO2 is liquid in the cylinder, one of the few common gases that is. That's why pressure stays constant until it's nearly empty. So it is liquid in the cylinder. I don't know. I thought, it just has a compressed gas on the, on the thing. Uh, I had a feeling it sloshed I, around, you know. Won't Amy know. need her mice? Yeah, they're going to, she's going to get them. Don't we worry. We have lots of mice. Don't worry. All right. I got to go. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Amy. I guess I'll, yeah. I, what are we doing tomorrow? You said you didn't need me, so I'm doing three podcasts. Yeah, okay. I don't think we need you. I need to write the, I need to progress on the summary. I took care of the journal crap and now stuff, and now I need to do the summary crap. Okay. Uh, I also need to clean up my desk a little bit more. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank so you, Amy. So exhausting to clean up the desk. Well, you hey. just put it in the recycle bin. No, I got to find Dubin's instructions and crap. Okay. All right. Good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good Bye. night. Bye. Open course on monkeypox. We need a whole course on monkeypox. Just listen to Twiv and Twivo and Daniel's update. Uh, let's see. Thank Oh, Eru Eruiko. Hello. How are you? Yeah, TL2 liquefies is back up to spring. Yeah. So it's a liquid and it sublimates. Okay. Thank you. I don't have to do any more CO2. That's it. I'm going to send all the tanks back. I can't wait. Now you may, you may ask me why am I closing my lab? You haven't, but I'm going to tell you. First of all, Amy has been the lab for the last six, seven years. And there's no one left to continue. And I don't want to train anybody new. I'm sick of the science funding game. It sucks. And I'm tired of dealing with it. And I'm also tired of people who are not that good. They're not that devoted. And I had a number of people in the lab who discouraged me at their lack of enthusiasm. Let's put it that way. I'm tired of that, whereas I can make podcasts and lots of people listen. I can teach the world virology and it works. There's no surus involved. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm 69 years old. I've had 40 years in research. I'm going to try something else, something else. <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. Yes, sir. Okay. And by the way, Dennis, I hope you feel better. I should have told you that. Thank you for your support of um, microbe TV, not NIH, no, not NIH, but this is a good guess. Thank you, thank you, Animal Party, and thank all of you for your, for your congratulations um, for um, the medal. It was a lot of fun. It was very honored because it's really a big deal. Yeah, filoviruses, that's another uh, virus in there. Um, so it's, it can be a long course. That's the thing. But it can't be huge because it has to be the fall because in the spring I teach my Columbia course and I can't uh, do another course at the same time. When is Amy getting her medal? We should all give her a medal. I'm sure she'll get a medal one day. Okay. Would ring vaccination against monkeypox have any chance of working? Yeah, it would. So for smallpox, that's how they eventually eradicated they would identify a case which is very easy to do you know most people who are infected get a rash it's quite easy to, to pinpoint them it's not like SARS-CoV-2 where 20 percent of infections are, are inapparent right so you identify and then you vaccinate all the people around that person who could potentially be in contact it's called ring vaccination and they would do that wherever a new case would pop up and that's how they eventually eradicated now Smallpox vaccine pr confers protection against monkeypox. 
So, yes, you could take smallpox vaccine if needed. You know, if this started to spread more extensively, you could then do ring vaccination and, and contain it. Yeah, I have no doubt. Because if we don't have a monkeypox vaccine, we have a smallpox vaccine. It's a good question. Yep. Okay. Someone named Vincent is going to miss someone named Amy. Well, of course. I've been working with her for, for eight years. In this iteration, I will miss daily consultations for sure. Um, and uh, But uh, even the tourists I'll miss. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's countered by the fact that she has to have her own career. It's great. I'm really glad that she got this position. And uh, uh, she's going to do very well, for sure. Very proud of her, what she's accomplished. And you guys saw it evolve here on the live stream, right? When we Two years ago when we started, she was still struggling, looking for a position. And then shortly after, she started doing the experiments that gave her the data that essentially got her the position. It's really good. Okay, I saw something on PBS NewsHour about a vaccine gun that uses lasers to vaccinate people by shooting the vaccine through the hole the laser made. No, I haven't heard of that, but I'm not surprised. It probably makes micro perforations and, and does that because there was there used to be a DNA gun that would shoot DNA into your muscle because people were experimenting with DNA vaccines uh, for a while. And of course, the gun is very quick, right? You can get a lot of people at once. So this I haven't heard of, but I'm not surprised that uh, it's being worked on. Uh, to what degree does smallpox vaccine protect? So it's, a, it's about an 85% protection, right? So 85 out of 100 people who've been vaccinated with smallpox vaccine, if challenged with monkeypox, will be protected. And it's long-lasting, right? So people who have been vaccinated, like my age, I was vaccinated as a kid. I'm, I'm probably still protected against monkeypox. So we're talking probably 30, 40 years, right? And I think I would guess that most of the people who are getting monkeypox now um, were not vaccinated. But remember, some of them might be, and in, in, it's 85%. It's not 100%. Just remember that. Oh, you listen daily too. I'm working my way through the library. Okay. Um, yeah, we do put out a lot of content, so I suppose you could you could do that. Yeah. Um, are there any more antivirals for this pandemic? Yes, there are. I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago when people were saying that there's more amazing antivirals to come, but of course it's all proprietary and I don't know about it. But yeah, there will be. And maybe they'll be useful for long COVID. Who knows? We'll see. Sister tested positive. Her DO prescribed ceftonir, benzona, and albuterol. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to think because I don't know the, the general health of the patient if they're at risk. But, you know, if it's an at-risk person, if it's an older person, there's a there is a a course of action that Daniel publishes on on uh, TWIV every week. There's a Daniel's clinical course, and none of these are part of that. So if you're at risk, you know, you will get monoclonals or Paxlovid, uh, and it depends where you are in the infection. So this is nothing I've ever seen. There you go. Yeah, ceftonir for a viral infection. Good Lord. No, you shouldn't be doing that for sure. <laughs> This is the last time you're going to do that. Yeah, she says, I have to go do a plaque assay, but she's going to be at home when she's doing this in Chevy Chase because she can't do it where she's going to be working. It's not permitted. So <laughs> she could say, I have to go bake some cookies, I suppose, but she may be stuck with us for two hours. What do you think about that? Uh, CDC sent out emails to clinicians telling them to stop giving antibiotics. Yeah, but they will still do it. Many, many uh, still prescribe antibiotics. And, you know, uh, 
Daniel is always saying, don't prescribe antibiotics for a viral infection. People still do it. But I guess they don't listen to him. The patches was in reference to, oh, microneedle patches. Okay. Uh, well, I don't remember what the question was. Yeah, microneedle patches, they're infused with vaccine, and then they're put on your arm with a Band-Aid, and they have little needles in them. Have you guys seen them? They're pretty cool. Let's get a picture. I often talk about this in my course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here's, here's one. No, I don't like that one. That's That's scary. <laughs> Okay, now, now I click on the picture and it goes away. Okay, here we go. Let's share the screen. There it is. See that thing on the finger? It's a microneedle patch. It's a little centimeter square of plastic, and those are tiny uh, needles, in them, but you don't feel them. They're tiny, and then they're soaked in antigen, and it injects it into your skin, into your epidermis, which is a great place to put vaccine, and they work very well. Okay, microneedle patches. Uh, what significance was this finding? SARS-CoV-2 RNA polymerase requires two iron sulfur clusters. Earlier studies had mistakenly identified these binding sites for zinc. Oh, so if you could somehow chelate uh, the, the iron sulfur, you could inhibit it. But that would be very hard to do because iron sulfur is also needed for us. So it would be hard to specifically do it uh, to... Uh, to the polymerase. There are easier ways to get at it. I was only a farm tech, but I know one doesn't treat a viral infection with antibiotics. You know, many hospitals, they just have a standard of care and they throw it at you. And many hospitals still give you hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, and there's no stopping them. It's crazy. So today I go to my, my uh, doctor for a physical and we start talking about how information doesn't percolate throughout the medical community. And I said, there's still people prescribing hydroxychloroquine. And he said, you know, I would be very happy if hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin worked, but I need to see the data, and there are no data. So this is a doc. He understands the value of data, which apparently cardiologists do not. Oh, that's very nice of you. Science doesn't stand on my shoulders. I am an evangelist for science, though. If you listen to the Ernst lecture, the discussion afterwards, there was a discussion of activism, and and I said, I'm not an activist. I'm an evangelist for science. I promote science by trying to explain it. Okay? Uh, the, the funding is just... Uh, tragedy. And if you ask the people who get money, they'll say it's fine, of course, because they get money. And much of my career, I had no trouble getting money. In recent years, it's been harder. And they showed no respect to Amy whatsoever. It was pathetic. And I'm really glad she's going somewhere where she doesn't have to write grants. My friend is looking to work for a PI. Any advice? Well, as in what capacity? The best thing you can do is find out exactly what they're doing and know it, and so you can have conversations with them about what they're doing. Of course, go to their meetings, get involved. Don't shy away. Go to the PI and talk to them and ask questions, even if they're busy, okay? You have to make them notice you, especially if it's a big lab. Oh, you remember our conversations with Udell about funding? Yeah, that, that was a number of years ago, but he also has very specific ideas. And this is a guy who works at the NIH. But he's, of course, an intramural researcher, which means he's at NIH and he gets their money through the inside. We were extramural investigators, meaning we're at a university and we ask NIH to give us money. It's a little harder to do that. Nevertheless, he understood the problems. Are you not suspicious why Bill Gates also funds mainstream media? Well, I don't know what, what his reasoning is. He doesn't fund us. And I think we should get his support because we're doing something better than mainstream media. I mean, look, where else do you find the science programming that we do consistently 
in all, in all these six or seven different fields multiple times a week. That's what I want to bring everyone. So I think it would be nice to have his support. Mainstream media has its own function. But you know what the problem, mainstream media is so biased now. Nowadays, it's even worse than when I was a kid, right? They actually want to know what you want to hear. No, you don't ask people what they want to hear. You figure out what the news is and you give it to them. That's the way it used to be, almost. It was never perfect. Uh, what are the effects of agglutinated cationic lipid nanoparticles on mitochondrial membranes? None, as far as I can tell. It's not a problem. Um, I was a research admin for 20 years, most of, uh, most of HR, but I did do grant accounting. I did write grants. I understand what you're, you're talking about. The grant situation is a mess, which I think most people don't understand. And um, <clears throat> most of us spend pretty much all our time writing grants and not doing experiments, which is just wrong. And nobody seems to want to fix it, all right? Plenty of people know the problems and critique the NIH, but no, they don't want to fix it. I don't get it. And now that I don't need the frickin' NIH money anymore, I'm going to criticize it liberally, starting as soon as uh, Amy is out the door. Uh, so I just answered the Bill Gates question. I don't know who deleted it, but I answered it, okay? So chill. <laughs> Are uh, reviews for grants not double-blind? No. You don't know who the reviewers are, but they know you. Your name is on the application. However, you have all the names of the people on the panel. So you could guess who's reviewing your grant because everyone has a certain field, right? I send in an enterovirus grant, and there are three enterovirologists on the panel. I know who reviewed my grant. There's nothing you can do about it. And even when you see them at a meeting, you can't tell them, what's with you, schmuck? No, you can't say that because they're going to review your grant again, even though you'd like to. Have you published photos of the opening? No, not yet. I will. I will. Okay. Niskan is a center-left libertarian think tank. Okay. <laughs> what kind of research applications tend to be the most successful? Well, the ones from big labs with a lot of people where they do the experiments almost to their completion before they write the grant. And so you know everything's going to work. And that's highly unfair, and that's not the way it should be because I would argue that the big labs are not all that productive for the number of people they have and the amount of money they, they get. But NIH loves to fund big labs. They think that's the way to go. When I was training, I was in Peter Palacy's lab. It was me and him for a while. We did just fine. You know, you don't need to have huge labs to be productive, but that's the that's the way of the future, and I think that's not good. I don't think it should all be in big labs. I'm sorry. So, what kinds of yeah, big labs, and you know, certain subject areas, influenza, HIV, now SARS-CoV-2 in the in the virus area, which is what I know. Former director of BARDA told me Tony didn't have a sense of urgency, which is kind of reflected in his emails that were released. Okay, well, I'm sorry that was the case because I think he subsequently did get a sense of urgency, right? Corona and uh, SARS and MERS didn't become U.S. epidemics. Fauci changed once it was spreading here. Maybe he, think, he thought it wasn't going to change. Patricia, yes, <laughs> you can travel. I answered this question on Twivo today. But um, you can travel. I traveled with three vaccinations. I flew over to Zurich with a mask because I had to test negative to come back. I tested negative. One of the most relieving days of my life. Greatest sigh of relief. Um, and then I flew back without a mask and no mask since then. Because I don't believe it's necessary. But if you have four shots, you can certainly travel. Go for it. Two hundred ninety-one likes, a little more, folks. What do you think is the actual incubation time from infection until symptom onset for Omicron? So, you know, it's hard to know without a challenge study, which I don't 
condone. So what we do is we make observations which are really problematic because there are too many variables. Daniel Griffin thinks it's two to three days and faster than previous variants, all right? Infection till symptom onset, very short period of time. With respect to North Korea's COVID, they have not mass vaccinated. As far as uh, NK watchers are aware, North Korea will strike the malnourished and elderly badly, for sure. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's because the, the government has no concern for the well-being of its citizens, right? What happened in China is that they vaccinated the young, not the old. Uptake was low Omicron. Now they're screwed. Well, they could fix it by vaccinating. I don't know why they don't. So what's going on? I'm not sure. Two million cases, as North Korea reported, the armed forces have been mobilized to contain spread by issuing a national lockdown. Okay, well, that's better than nothing, right? How about a journal called Stuff That Doesn't Work? <laughs> um, you uh, wouldn't get anyone to publish it, right? They just wouldn't do it. I think it's a fun idea. I mean, you could do a podcast on it, right? And talk about papers that don't work. But we don't want to do that. We have limited time, so we tell you good papers for the most part, right? Uh, oh, look at this. Well, Jen, Amy's gone, but yes, she worked at Loyola. You work in the clinical micro lab. So maybe, yeah, so Amy used to be at Loyola and she worked on the microbiome of women with urinary tract, in, w urinary incontinence, the microbiome of the bladder. Yeah, very interesting. The um, New Yorkers aren't supposed to care what people think of them. Oh, yeah, but that's just a, a face, right? They actually do. <laughs> oh, dear. Unfortunately, you can't get Microbe TV as a charity on Amazon Smile in the UK. Okay, that's fine. I'm sorry about that. We can't all win, right? Now, if you had an under five-year-old who had COVID without any long-term effects this past winter, would you care which vaccine you got them? No, either one is fine, from what I can tell. Uh, from what I can tell, there's no difference. No, I got one of each. I actually got two Modernas and one Pfizer. It's fine. Uh, Hong Kong study Molnupiravir observed 47% reduced progression to severe disease, Paxlovid 67. Yeah. So Paxlovid outperforms uh, Molnupiravir for sure. Different numbers in different places, but it does. It does outperform. Okay. Okay. Because of the potential for bat coronas to cause disease in humans, further surveillance is in North America are needed. Yes, we don't do enough surveillance um, in North America. What do you think about mask wearing in elevators? Seem to me like it's a confined space that is higher risk than most others. If you want to wear a mask in the elevator, go ahead. I do not wear masks anymore because... I am vaccinated three times. I am protected against severe disease and hospitalization. That's my interpretation of the data. Um, and this is the way it's going to be. Nothing's going to change in six months, in 12 months, in two years. The virus will always be here. It will cause outbreaks in the winter. If you want to wear a mask in the winter, that's great. An elevator, yeah, is a confined space. Not a lot of circulation if you're worried Wear a mask in the elevator. I, uh, people wear them all the time in the elevators. Absolutely. I get on and I don't have a mask. If they said, could you wear a mask? I'd put one on. Sure, but they don't. I recall Daniel said the flu vax was missing something. Well, 
we on a TWIV actually we discussed the fact that they missed the the H3N2 component. So there's not a good match between the vaccine and the circulating H3N2 virus this year. So protection um, is not as good as it could be. That's it. Yep. I will miss uh, Amy's wonderful humor. Well, she's not going anywhere. You can still come here and listen to it. <laughs> um, although I'm thinking we might change it. Although you like Q&A with A and V. I was thinking of changing it to virology office hours, but, you know, it's just because it's a little broader. But Q&A with A and V is cool too, right? What do you think? Let me know. Is there a way to make a card or a kudo board for Amy? I don't know. You guys figure it out. You could do it. Sure, she'd love for you to do something. Um, <laughs> how well do the Chinese vaccines work? Well, it depends what study uh, you look at. They Two doses are not protective against Omicron, but with, when combined with the third dose, I think it was with a different vaccine. They have the inactivated vaccines. My impression is they're not as good as mRNA or adenovirus vectored vaccines. Um, did you come across Brett Weinstein on Twitter going nuts over being denied nuts on an airplane? No. Come on, grow up. Why did they deny nuts? They're in a bag. Uh, they only had one bag of nuts on the flight I had to Zurich. <laughs> I don't know why. They ran, maybe they ran out. I don't know. But it's fine. I don't need to have nuts, okay? Yeah, I, I mean, monkeypox is probably a, a one-lecture course, right? That's what they call a course. You know, it's not my definition of a course, which is 20 weeks or more. It's a real thing. Not One lecture is a orientation or something like that. You know, I'm a professor. I get to use the words properly. <laughs> anyway, I don't, um, I don't, what was I going to say? I don't want, I forgot now. Sorry, folks. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> lots of lots of uh, laser drilling into skin would do a damage a lot of DNA. Well, no, you could moderate it. I'm sure in a way that um, you could moderate it in a way that would be less damaging for sure. Is it worth taking a COVID antibody test? No, I don't think so. You're going to get a number, but you're not going to know what it means. So I wouldn't bother. Don't save your money. Bavaria has a new mo monkeypox vaccine that protects against monkeypox as well as smallpox. Okay, let's see. MPX vaccine. You know, the smallpox vaccine. Yeah. Monkeypox mo vaccine. Yeah, there you go. MPX uh, vaccine preventable disease, blah, blah. A newer monkeypox vaccine, Genios. Here it is. Let's uh, share the screen so everybody... Can can see Genios, see there, has been licensed. Uh, here we go, Genios, by the U.S. FDA since 2019 to prevent monkeypox and smallpox. Interesting. Uh, the ACAM 2000 smallpox vaccine may also protect people. That's the revised smallpox vaccine. Past data from research suggests the initial vaccine is about 85% effective. The duration is unknown. There you go. So there are the vaccines, Genios and ACAM 2000. Yeah, thank you, um, Janet, for that information. It's good to know. Doesn't 85% mean for every 100 unvaccinated people that get sick, only 15 are vaccinated? Uh, it could, right? It would depend on how they calculate that. I'm not sure, but you might be right. For every 100 unvaxxed that get sick, only 15 are vaccinated. That, that would be good. Yes, thank you. Yes. The episode with Richard Plemper. Yes, so if you want to learn about molnupiravir, talk, listen to the Richard Plemper TWIV because he worked on it. 
And, you know, it's an hour. Where else are you going to get an hour with all these scientists? You're going to get a couple of minutes maybe, you know, on some talk shows you get an hour with Peter Hotez. Do you need an hour with Peter Hotez? I don't think so. You could have an hour with Daniel Griffin, but here you're going to get hours with scientists of all sorts. We did one on immune today. Uh, Al, Al Springer from Springer, can't remember, from NIH. It was great, really great. Now, a lot of people are telling me uh, they, they listen every day. That's very cool. Is there any study on fomite transmission? I don't know if there's any specific studies. You know, people looked at uh, maintenance of infectivity of virus on surfaces, which would give you some indication of how long it could remain infectious. It doesn't last very long, but the conclusion has been that most of the transmission over 90 percent is by respiratory droplets thank you vera for your contribution and thank you for your um congratulations on the award we always wondered for micro needle delivery would new trials have to be done for existing vaccines yes in fact they're doing trials for existing influenza vaccines you have to show that the delivery the change of delivery allows it to work sure absolutely here's amy's medal thank you very much <laughs> yes are people on ace inhibitors less likely to be infected no they are not no data says that. A hospital that uses ivermectin would be a hospital I would never set foot in. Yeah, unfortunately, there are some here in New Jersey where they give ivermectin. The problem is you may be brought in on a stretcher. You don't have any say, right? But I get your message. I totally get your message. I like what you said that public needs access to the papers that are peer-reviewed. Yes, that's what I said in my Ernst lecture. I always thought that preprints were a great idea until the pandemic when the press grabs a preprint and runs with it and it's not right, wrong conclusions. So I want the peer reviewed papers to be accessible, but they're not because the journals want to protect their profits. And so this is another issue with science. We've locked science behind a paywall and most of it is paid for by tax dollars. Not most, a good fraction is paid for by tax dollars. So why are we locking up the results? We give our data to the journals. That's just terrible. You know, El Sevier, which owns Cell and, and billions of other journals, is a multi-billion dollar company. They're profiting left and right from the scientists' work. What do the scientists get? Nothing. They get no money from it. This is morally bankrupt, and that needs to change also. It's ridiculous. It's not gonna change. It's because scientists are as bad as anyone else. They're set in their ways and they don't want to change and they don't want to rock the boat. <sighs> Florian Kramer said, joking, he hated DNA viruses. To him, they're just weird bacteria. <laughs> it's not weird at all. They are. How do I view them? Well, you know, we don't want to make anthropomorphic comments about viruses, right? They are viruses. And they can do amazing things. They have big. They can have big DNA genomes. They can have small DNA genomes. They have remarkable replication strategies. I teach them in my course. But I think RNA viruses, by virtue of having higher mutation rates, simply can occupy more niches. They can infect more species in the world. They can be more adaptable to change. So, you know, I don't put a value on that. I don't think they're weird. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Your channel is wonderful. I usually do a show Wednesdays at 9, but I'm not. I'm going to go to 10 just so I can watch you before we do our climate change. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. I, I don't... Uh, this is a good hour, right? 8 p.m.? I mean, I could change it, but who knows how, how many people would leave. So I'm not going to do it at this point. I 
think DNA viruses are this strange creature in between real viruses and cells. Well, I don't know if you can feel that way. I'm not sure it's right, right? Um, between real viruses and cells. No, they're all viruses. I'll just leave it at that. Have any of the Twivers had COVID? I think, well, Dixon has certainly had it. I have not. I don't know of any of the others. They they haven't mentioned it, yeah. China problem now is that old people's superstitions and problems with precious drugs means reluctance to take vaccines now. You know, it's not a good situation where they have a lot of issues with trust and communication, and now they have to do something that's just not going to happen. But this is what's wrong with a autocracy, can we call it, whatever? I mean, not that democracies or republics are perfect, but, yeah, who knows what's the best way to deal with these issues. China, old people tend to prefer traditional medicines, don't like drugs and vaccines. Yeah, I can understand that. And China has the largest growing elderly population. Uh, SARS-2 gastrointestinal infection linked to long COVID. Anything relevant? No. I am not. I have not seen any data which say that the virus infects the intestine. And we just did a paper on Twitter which says they looked in feces of 70 COVID patients and didn't find any infectivity. You know, some people look in cells, they see some particles, they see some antigen, they conclude it's replicating. But I want to see infectious virus before you conclude that there is some symptom related to replication. In fact, in that study that I just told you about, whether or not people had PCR-positive feces, SARS-CoV-2 PCR positivity in their feces was not in any way related to their clinical picture. So I just think it's a red herring. People can have GI symptoms, but they're probably related to inflammation, not virus replication. Last week, you mentioned there have been studies comparing memory T after two and three shots. Okay, <clears throat> you said to email you, which I did. I will get back to you, Ramona. My, my email list is long, and some days I travel and I, I don't get to it, but I'll get to it. I, I slowly make my way down. <clears throat> is If COVID is a respiratory infection, are GI symptoms due to the immune system? Oh, this is a perfect timing, or is the virus infecting gut cells? So I don't see any data that the virus is infecting gut cells, at least not productively. It might be getting in. Um, I think it's inflammatory related. Well, but I admit that more work needs to be done. I just What I object to is people concluding something without the appropriate data. That burns me up. When the data come out and if they're right and I'm wrong, hey, I'll admit it. But don't conclude it prematurely. That's not how science works. I went to the supermarket a couple of hours ago and 3% of people were masked. Yeah, it's about right. Very few people are. You know, it seems to change from day to day. I don't know why. Some, like on the trains, I would say it's maybe 10% in, in New York here. But, you know, when I went for my doctor's appointment, of course, healthcare places, you all have to mask up, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Q&A, Q huh? I hope every now and then we can get a Q&A with Brianne and Vincent. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I do like virology office hours because it gives it an academic bent, right? You think Q&A with A&V is catchy? Gosh, I just threw that together without thinking. Okay, well, if, if Amy was not going to do Q&A anymore, I was going to change it to virology office hours and just do it myself with maybe Daniel or Brienne every now and then. But she's going to do it, so we'll keep it uh, to Q&A. So... There are plenty of nuts on the airplane. Yeah, those kind of nuts there are. <laughs> yeah, so I vote office hours to open it up for other guests. But Amy and I are doing Q&A. So 
China's doing a, an mRNA vaccine phase three. Yeah. Yeah. So they decided in the beginning that mRNA vaccines were a crappy Western product. And then that was stupid for them to say that because you don't mix politics with science. You know what happens when you mix politics with science? You get politics. Are you going maskless because you have already gotten sick? No, I've never had COVID as far as I know. I've tested multiple times at the university. I have three vaccines and three vaccines are sufficient to prevent severe disease and hospitalization. And that's good enough for me. I like those numbers and I like my life and my work or my profession, my passion. And so that's what I'm doing. You don't have to listen to me, but people always ask me what I'm doing. So I tell you, got it. Thank you, Mr. Ozzy Cam. Thank you, and good to see you again. And I, ha I haven't forgotten your letter. Don't worry, I will get it out in the next week, okay? Uh, Barb Mac, yes. Uh, ACAM 2000 has a number of side effects, yes. Um, it's an improvement on the original, but it still has side effects, yeah. Have you had the pleasure to interview any virus hunters? Yes, of course, many virus hunters, including Ian Lipkin, but others that I don't remember. Um, but yes, we have. What are the chances my smallpox vaccine from the 70s will have any efficacy? I think it's a very good chance. So we got 30, 50 years. I think you're at the, at the edge of efficacy, but... Yeah, it's, it's um, let's see, if you're, they said if you're 50 and up, you probably have protection from your smallpox vaccine. I would stick with Q&A. Office hours is not a global term. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's a little elitist, but I do like my office hours because I enjoy talking to my students but yes we'll probably stick with q a yep q a sounds fun and catchy and that's funny because I, as i said boy i just <laughs> i just made it up are there any attempts to use virus to attack bacterial infections yes many you we have done multiple podcasts on this i have a lecture on it in my virology course. Yes, there are many examples, interesting examples. Um, we did a TWIV at Texas A&M a couple of years ago with some of the people who designed a bacteriophage to treat a patient who is severely ill with an acinetobacter infection. You should listen to it. We have multiple ones. It's really good. I like this. One of the best phrases I got, show me the evidence, stops a lot of useful conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I still, I still feel that way. Show me the evidence. Show me the data. They can't. Uh, so this is an interesting question, Lucky Sixes. Given how freaked out people are about the small risk of myocarditis, yeah, people often don't, do I mean there's a higher risk from driving in a car, right? So um, uh, it, you know it depends on their perception of the danger because they a lot of people think COVID is not a big deal, right? I incorrectly, but they see people with smallpox and the horrible rash, and they oh I need to get vaccinated against it. So it's always a perception of risk, which is not always correct. Trying to figure out where Amy is going. So uh, she should probably tell you next week because she got a tentative letter of employment today and she had to accept it before they give her the final letter. And then if she gets that next week, she will tell you. She just doesn't want to jinx it. But I will tell you all, you will be very pleased to see where she's going and um, you're going to be very happy for her. Yeah. It's not a medical school, no. It's not a government. It's not, um, uh, what is it? U U U uh, USUHS, Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences. No, she's not going there. 
Okay. 363 likes. Let's get it over 400, folks. Sorry if you already answered this, but is all the monkeypox talk something to be concerned about? Probably not. I, I think it's, you know, we've seen this before and it's not likely not to be an issue, but we did talk about it a lot. Uh, by the way, I just want to bring one thing up, which I've really been infatuated with. I read on the plane to Zurich, The Death of Expertise. And one of the things they, the author says is that scientists should not predict we answer questions. But the public wants us to predict. And it's very hard to resist predicting when someone's saying, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Monkeypox. So I'm getting more circumspect about predicting because of that. Because it's true. Scientists don't predict. They answer questions. I have a friend who got COVID. Hello, Pamela Jane. I'm getting submissions for, I made a poetry contest for your books. I'm getting submissions. So some future twiv will read some of them. Hope you like them. Uh, it took a, it was a while back. He got the current appropriate monoclonal infusion. I also took ivermectin. He credits ivermectin. Well, that's nothing you'll ever convince him out of, right? This, this happens all the time. People conflate two, two events and they say they're related and that's it. Cardiologist is tweeting about a STM article about nasal vaccines. He seems to think this is variant proof. No, it is not variant proof any more than the current vaccines are. They are variant proof in the sense that if you have three doses, you're protected against Omicron, severe disease and death. And if you get three doses of these, you will also be protected. So, you know, the, the cardiologist is infatuated with attention. It's really sad. Really sad. Uh, yes, Dixon was on C CBS Sunday talking about vertical farming. Yeah, indoor agriculture. Very cool. Very cool. True what you say about scientists get set in their ways. The German physicist Max Planck once said that science advances one funeral at a time. Oh, that's brilliant. That's so true. I've heard that before. Yes, it is true. And it's very hard to break people of their habits. You know, Many scientists, they have a hypothesis. They never leave it. Even if their data proves it wrong, they cannot leave it because they're so stuck on it. About the papers, in my country, it's impossible to pay for them. One dollar means five reyes, so I would pay something, about 150. Here's a clue. Here's a tip. You can always email the authors and ask them for a, for a PDF. Most authors are happy to send you a PDF copy of their paper, Okay. And if you really want something and you can't get it, just ask me. But don't tell anyone I said that. I believe at one time you said mucosal vaccination doesn't last a long time. What do you mean by mucosal vaccine? A vaccine that's delivered to mucosal surfaces. So flu mist, which is sprayed into your nose, the virus reproduces in the epithelial, the mucosal epithelium. Um, oral polio vaccine, which you swallow and reproduces in the mucosa of your intestine, that's a mucosal vaccine. The antibody levels tend to contract uh, rather quickly. Little news from Mr. Ozzycam, who used to be here a lot. I'm back at uni doing a master's of education for secondary school. Public education is my mission. Vincent is a master of education, although I haven't got time for virology. It's not forgotten. <laughs> Thank you for the news. Okay. It's disgusting that the companies pay for access to information. Well, you know, a writer writes something they pay for. You have to pay to buy the book and read it, right? That's different. Well, I, I don't know if it's a science book. I'm not sure. But let's talk about journals. This is research funded by tax dollars, so it should be people should be able to read it. But even more so, the, com the journal companies are profiting off of research done by scientists, and they get nothing. At the least, they could invest in their lab, put some of the profit back in their lab, right? 
So you publish a paper for every subscription, for every download, you get a so much for your lab. That would make sense. But no, the journals are not going to do that. They want it all for themselves. It's all about selfishness in this world, sadly. Okay, we are wrapping it up here. Thank you, Siddhartha, for your contributions. Will you be doing another course like Virology Live? Yeah, I'm going to do a viruses course in the fall where I cover individual viruses and perhaps with an extended part on coronaviruses. Thank you, Gabriel, for your contribution. Really appreciate it. Support of science education. Thank you, Fernie, as well, for your support of science education at the Incubator and Microbe TV. Has varicella changed much over the years? No. And we are using the same vaccine. Uh, and um, it doesn't matter if you get it first or last. No. I've never seen any data to that effect. Is Amy going to be a spy? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't think you'd be proud of her being a spy, right? Isn't hypothesis just another name for prediction? No, I don't think so. I can, I can see where you might say that. Um, but let's say my hypothesis is that the mitochondria uh, is where energy is made. It's a stupid hypothesis, but just as an example. As opposed to a prediction, which is how many cases of COVID do you think they're going to be? And th that the prediction, you, you have to just wait. You can't do an experiment to test it. So maybe the deciding factor would be whether you can do an experiment to test it or not, right? It's okay for you to predict. Your prediction is better than mine, and I ignore you when someone shows me the data. <laughs> I don't... I've I read that. I don't want to predict anymore. I will because I'm susceptible to people wanting to tap my expertise. But scientific expertise is not about prediction. It's about answering questions. I really do think so. My husband is 82 with leukemia, diabetes, heart disease, dementia. We have been vaccinated and boosted. We will need to wear masks in public indoor spaces forever. I'm not sure, but if you feel that way, it's absolutely fine. Uh, but yes, the virus is going to be around forever. That's correct. And if you're particularly susceptible, um, but you know there, are, there are there's Evusheld, which can protect you for months at a time, up to what six months to a year, um, and then there's uh, antivirals, and they're going to be more coming out. So there may be a time when you feel more comfortable to do it. You know, just don't give up at this point. I'm thinking she's going to the government. Well, yes, yeah, she's going to some part of the government. That's correct. But she's not going to the CIA. <laughs> could modified phages be used as drug delivery agents? Yes, I, I do think they could be. Um, they could be because they have a nice capsid with high capacity and on the right trigger. But how do you get it into eukaryotic cells, right? That's the, poor, that's the thing. Unless you want to deliver it to bacteria. Drugs for bacteria, sure. And I'm, I'm, people are working on that for sure. Uh, it doesn't matter which cardiologist because there's more than one. But I'm now using it as a catchphrase to mean people who are speaking outside of their expertise. I would never talk to you about heart disease. The only time I do it is to say, uh, myocarditis is associated with vaccination or COVID at different frequencies, and that's it. But these cardiologists and others are, are waxing about infectious diseases, and they're not trained in them. But as I said, they're, they're, they are infatuated. They're seduced by the public attention, which they've never had before. Although it has seemed to me that if you're a doctor and you take care of people, that should be enough attention for you to satisfy your ego, but apparently not. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ozzy Cam. Knowledge should be free. 
you are a master of distributing knowledge for free, and for that, people should be grateful. Yeah, I, I, that's my goal. That's why I want to fundraise to support Microbe TV so we can do it all for free. And hopefully it works, right? Okay, if you are going to do a virus course, you will do a pre-course on genetics, DNA, RNA. For me, that's always the stumbling block. Well, you know, I did a virus course, right? I did virolo principles of virology, um, and I didn't do that for that. But there are other places you can get genetics, DNA, RNA, right? You can go in, on um, MIT Open Course where you can go on Khan Academy. You could get it elsewhere. There are a lot of other places. So I don't, I don't think I need to do that. I, although I know it would be good because I love to teach, and that that is part of teaching well. Um, I, I think my time is better spent doing viruses. Yeah. Back to dirty wire cutter to get my ring off crushed fingers. Got the combo tetanus shot, and I think I had a reaction. Itchy face for a week. Could be. Well, that's terrible that uh, you have um, you have to cut your ring off to get it off the crush. That's why I don't wear rings anymore. See? No rings. No crushed rings on fingers. What do you think of adaptive biotechnologies, T-detect test that sequences TCRs and compares them to a database? I think it's a good... Start. It's not quantitative. It's not functional, right? You don't know if those, those just T cells are functional, and that's the the missing point in all of this. It was Robert Maxwell who started the profiteering by science journals. He went round to the various learned societies, offered to take the printing of their in-house journals off their hands. It's really a shame. It is really, really a shame. Uh, five more people to break the four hundred. Okay, you guys are all guessing about where Amy's going. Just wait till next week. I, 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 you could guess where she's going. I've already said it's not the NIH. What else is left in that area that's government? <laughs> you could figure it out. Come on. Uh, is there a eukaryotic cell virus combination that would replicate the Hershey chase? Yeah. You put DNA into cells. You take a, a viral genome extract the DNA or RNA, put it in cells, and out pops virus. That validates the Hershey Chase experiment. Yep. <laughs> Cardiologists get the heart of the matter, but should stay in their lane. Very good. I like that. I very much like that. There's no need for journals. Let the scientists themselves decide whose work to follow and let the preprint servers do the review. I wish, you know, apparently the physicists do that. They put their work on preprint servers, and then when it's time to get tenured, the tenure committee has to read all their papers. So um, it could be done, but the scientists are not going to bucket. They're not going to bucket. Nope. Okay. No, no, she's not going to the CDC. That's in Atlanta. She's not going to Atlanta. There's no CDC in, in the D.C. area, right, as far as I know? Okay. All right, folks, that brings us to 10 p.m. I've got through the questions. And um, it's time to say good night and thank you. We did get over our 400 likes. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. What Do I have to do a heart sign, right? I never did that. There you go. Thanks, all of you. Put it in front of the uh, speakers. Eh. Thanks, all of you, for coming tonight. I really appreciate this lovely community uh, we have built and which will endure because uh, Amy's going to continue. So next week from Chevy Chase, come back, folks, Wednesday night, uh, 8 p.m. I want to thank the moderators, Les, Vanity Nutrition, Tom. All right, did I get you all? Uh, we were missing Frank and Steph tonight. Uh, but um, good to see you all. Be safe. Until next week. Good night, folks. <laughs>